Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you guys are enjoying uh, lectures on the Professor YouTube channel. Uh, we're going to be starting quantum mechanics lecture series. In the very first lecture, we're going to be on Schrodinger equation. That's the very basic um, starting point what I see for a quantum mechanics course. Uh, most of you guys who are taking this course first time, um, you might not be familiar with uh, this equation. But nevertheless, uh, the idea here is to take you from the very basic understanding to more complex concepts. Okay. You guys might have uh, learned about uh, basic atomic structure, what it is, how theories uh, about, uh, you know, were proposed and then later on scientists found out that okay the theory works I mean experiments prove the theory okay. now here um, at quantum level we are talking about uh, the tiniest particle which we can have at subatomic level and how the physical rules govern those particles so let's talk about first the classical uh, mechanics or uh, our day-to-day -day life. We deal with bigger objects. Say we are driving every day in a car. That's a thousands of thousands of times bigger object than what we are talking at the quantum level. Okay. So at the bigger objects, we the Newtonian mechanics or the laws of um, what physics, what Newton proposed, those work very well. Okay, and the bigger objects uh, in a space, relativity theory proposed by Einstein, those will work very well when your objects are larger. Okay, but those don't seem to work at the same, uh, you know, same rules which govern bigger objects. They seem to fail at subatomic level. So scientists found out or proposed different theories. Uh, they came up with different mathematical equations and whatnot. Okay. So let's try to understand uh, in classical mechanics or Newtonian world what we have. Let's say we have a ball of a mass mass m, and you throw this ball. Okay. That ball is moving. Uh, under a force okay now um, remember here we are talking about one direction x direction but in reality we are living in a three-dimensional world but for sake of simplicity to make our life easier to understand things in one dimension we are talking about let's say moving along the x direction okay so in classical approach what we can say, okay, if we have x means the distance traveled by this ball, okay, at some point in time, then what we can know, we can know its velocity, okay, simply the derivative of uh, distance uh, with respect to time. We can also know the momentum, mass multiplied by velocity. Okay? We can also know uh, the kinetic energy. Of this ball, okay, half mv square. So these are all things given by you know uh, Newton's laws of physics, okay, or in our classical uh, mechanics, classical physics, okay. But what about x t? How do we know uh, how much distance it has traveled? Okay. So we can all we also know from from Newton's laws that. Uh, the force is equal to mass multiplied by acceleration of the small okay and uh, if we are talking about uh, you know Newtonian classical mechanics we can also know that uh, the force is equal to uh, the derivative partial derivative of potential energy this V here is potential energy. It's partial derivative of potential energy with respect to the distance traveled. Okay. 
We know that and we know f equal to ma and what is a acceleration? It's nothing but uh, double uh, derivative with respect to time. Okay. And now if we put these values in, okay, we can precisely know uh, what we are looking for, x or any other variable of interest in our classical physics. But at the quantum level, things uh, don't seem to work in the way they seem to work at classical level. So how do we know? At the quantum level, we are talking in terms of a wave function, psi xt. So the particle is, uh, it is a particle, but Essentially, it is not a particle, it is behaving like a wave, and there is a difference between wave and particle. Okay? So, we are at a confused state that you know, should we call it a wave or should we call it a particle? Well, hold on, um, the particle is moving too fast, okay? So, it is mimicking like a wave. So Schrodinger, scientist uh, from Austria, he came up with a very uh, fantastic equation which can describe uh, the law at that quantum level. Okay? So this tiny ball here, I have just made it a little dot, but think about it. So we want to know what is its wave function. So if you may consider it's like a space and time wrapper, okay? wrapper or a cloth, you know, spread around in time and a space. You may think of in that way too. So what it is, Schrodinger's equation, so equation, Schrodinger's equation, I times H bar. It's nothing but the uh, Planck's constant divided by 2 pi, partial derivative of psi, psi with respect to time equal to minus h bar over 2m, psi square, uh, sorry, partial derivative, uh, double partial derivative of, of psi with respect to x, and uh, our potential energy and uh, the psi. So this equation, you know, how, what is the proof of this equation and what it is, we are not going to dis discussing in this lecture. But for now, like as we said here, Newton gave the uh, gave the uh, laws of physics or you know laws of motion. Uh, just remember, this is Schrodinger's equation, basic Schrodinger's equation. I is nothing but the imaginary number. So what it means that the wave function psi is uh, its nature is imaginary, or you know it's so it is giving certain kind of uh, information to us. Okay. Until the scientist Bond discovered that if we uh, if we take uh, the, the the complex conjugate of psi and multiply it with the psi, then we come up with, with the probability. Okay, so that basically represents the probability of finding a particle between x and a small distance traveled by this particle in time t. So let's say, for example, your particle originally is at this position x t, and it has moved. A very tiny distance dx, delta okay. x dx. Uh, so the probability basically that we can find this particle in between xt and xt is dx. Okay. That's a very interesting uh, finding, uh, formulation, and that also tells us something more about the nature of, of this wave function. Okay. 
So what it is, like if we try to see the nature or if we try to plot a uh, graph between psi square and x, it looks like uh, this as it is shown in this figure, a typical wave function. Okay. Now, this typical wave function, well, the, the particle is somewhere uh, along this wave function. Now, if you want to know where the particle is, okay, the particle can be at uh, A, B, or C. But most likely, let's say, uh, we are most likely the particle is uh, in vicinity, <laughs> in neighborhood of A. We can also say that, okay, this is small area dx. Um, that basically represents the probability of finding a particle in the range dx. So wave function, basically what it tells us that, we can know the probability of finding a particle at a certain point in time. But we can not, we are not sure whether the particle is there or not, but we have probability. Okay. Now, let's say it's a particle. We are interested in uh, knowing where it is. So, you know, where, where it is. You know, you, your measurement Measurement can say that, okay, I measure the particle at position C, okay, but uh, we can also only say that, okay, I measure it here, but where was the particle before C, whether it was at B or A. So that uh, leads us to in a kind of indecisive state. But do you think it, I mean, Think about it that uh, in the in the nature, do things are uh, exist uh, um, with the certainty or uncertainty? I mean, this is the car moving. You know, the car is moving. Okay, your house is there. You know, your house is there. So you, with certainty, you know, but at the quantum level, you don't know. If you measure it. Okay. Um, then you don't know where the particle was before that. Um, then I think uh, I was rare. I mean, you can read the history, but I think in '64, scientist Bell he proposed uh, further formulations and came up with the the idea and equation that okay, yeah, you have measured the particle at C, and where it was before, you don't know, but you you know the probability of the particle. This is very similar to like the, the wave in the ocean or ripples. Okay. Ripples, they are they are just, just moving. You can, you know. So think about it in, in that in that uh, in that manner. So that was uh, the, the basic idea and concept how the particle is uh, behaving at, at subatomic level. And how did it happen that uh, uh, the scientists, they did experiment, they, they bombarded particles, uh, say electrons across the two slit experiment. Um, you can know in your textbook or on internet search to slit experiments but when scientists bombarded they found a strange phenomena and then they were puzzled that uh, the classical mechanics doesn't work here now either it's a particle or it's a wave but it is behaving uh, or it is basically giving the nature of a particle as well as the nature of a wave so what it is so Schrodinger equation that tells us or that basically describes uh, the phenomena happening at subatomic level. Now, another interesting point here to note that now, for example, you know, psi um, 
x0. So you know at the time t uh, you know the psi of x. Then this equation also uh, behaves analogously to Newton's uh, classical uh, uh, manner that you can also know psi xt. So that was uh, that was a quite fantastic uh, formulation. Thank you guys. I hope you guys have uh, enjoyed this uh, very first lecture uh, of quantum mechanics lecture series. And thank you very much for subscribing and uh, your wonderful comments that uh, really encourages us to create more interesting lectures for, for your learning. And uh, please do subscribe Lee Professor channel on YouTube.